Yo, 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 boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, what's good? It's your boy Mano, aka Power and Papi. We are at day four on this year's end of the year list week. Okay, now we're looking at the worst albums that came out this year. It doesn't bring me too much joy talking about these albums, but I also think it's necessary to highlight these albums in as much a, lo- a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into making them allegedly. At number five, I have African Baddie by Yemi Alade. This one hurts, man, because Yemi Alade is one of the most sought-out performers out of Africa. And essentially, she's been able to get away with making the same album six times since 2014. The last time Yemi Alade challenged herself on her albums, uh, Jonathan was in office, man. And African Body would have to go down as a laziest attempt yet. Um, production value on this is as generic as they come. The Pan-Africanism and Mama Africa theme that she's always going for seems so performative at this point right now. All the collaborations here seem so forced and strategic. And the sequencing on this project is anywhere better face, man. To summarize this album, it's a compilation of weak attempts in various African markets. And sadly, this one has to make my list for one of the most disappointing projects this year. I don't know. I th- I think Nice is not inspired anymore. This is a, a an OG essentially that has and should be benefiting from the rise of Fuji influence and Akbala music in the pop scene right now. Not only is Nice not in his best shape on this project, he's also not making good selections for beats here. Um, everything feels very loopy and predictable. Just like the Ricardo Bank song, man, this is a weird Afro swing attempt and this track is so repetitive that it makes three minutes feel like three hours. On Kokoaye with Tiwa Savage, the harmonies they attempted to make here feels like nails on the chalkboard and the most random feature from Wyclef Jean. I mean, who put together this album? Was it Kenny's Music in 2006? I try not to attack album art, but Windows 98 called and he wants his wallpaper back, bro. I mean, it's nice to see a veteran still try and be active in the music scene today, but please, please, please seek help, seek other producers, better producers, people that actually can structure your work well and create reasonable features as well. Three, I have Melvito with Overdose EP. Now, this is a project that take on that takes on a lot of risk. Um, I and I can applaud them for that. I appreciate the amount of risk that went into this. But the thing about risks, and and I know how the saying goes with high risk, high reward. They also forget the part that with high risk, um, are high penalties and downfalls, man. And I think this is a very very good example of that. On this project, Melvito creatively knows how to ruin the songs with obnoxious and overwhelming sense that essentially ruined the experience of a song and i saw that with the first track with deo with gabzi with a lot that boy and it's a big example of what i'm pointing out it's taking a lot of risk but essentially they're not working and they end up ruining the entire experience of the project and yeah one of the worst lessons that i had this year at number two i have dr dollar with what a time to be alive um this is the most blatant misuse of resources and industry access that i have ever seen from a nigerian act um dr dollar is essentially known for being an executive a label executive formerly had tenny on his roster and i think he also still has hot kid as well it's like a nigerian dj khaled album except the dj khaled is front and center of every song just just to imagine that just picture it the most misuse of stellar names like sheon kuti like black bones like the cavemen like oxlade and definitely getting the half-assed approach from all of them this definitely reminds me of Ozibosko back in the day tinini tanana but this is the Agba edition and at number one you already know it you probably guessed it uh god's timing is the best i mean this man made me doubt my faith by calling this album god's timing is the best when in fact this album is three years too late it's already an uphill battle for anyone that has made a name for themselves in 2019 and it's essentially grown into a street pop legend but um bringing an album forward this late into your career or i guess at this point in a career when you don't necessarily have the zeitgeist you don't have the streets on lock as you used to have um it's gonna be an uphill battle and um i think this album suffers that from a pr and marketing perspective on the music perspective is super super lethargic and 
sleepy on many of the songs. A production seem as lousy as they can get. Going into this album, Omo prepared to fall asleep on songs like Montego Bay and also prepared to be annoyingly awoken by annoying horns on a song like Excuse Moi. Essentially, this album will fuck up your sleeping cycle. The very juvenile and nursery rhymes and melodies from Happy with Mayo Kun on this one. Melanin, Lil Kesh tried his very best to uplift the song, but no, the song didn't take me anywhere. Um, drink alcohol like it's water. It's evident that this is what the theme was when he was recording this album. Overall, the worst project that I've come across this year and it has to go down as my worst list in this year regardless uh but anyway that's my list ladies and gentlemen i'm curious what you guys think about this list what would you guys find as your worst album this year leave in the comment section i've been your boy mano expect my honorable mentions for albums tomorrow be on the lookout peace out